Hi there, welcome to the second video on multivariable functions. And in this video, we're going to look at uh, some techniques to help us visualize what the graphs of these functions would look like. Um, and so the, the two techniques that we're gonna look at are the, uh, the ideas of level curves and uh, traces, which are almost the same thing. And then we're gonna look at the concept of level surfaces which is something we can use to study the, what the graph of a function of three variables would look like, which we discussed in the last video that you can't actually graph it using any sort of like three-dimensional graphing software. If you do try to do it, what the software is going to give you is going to try to show you the, the level surfaces, which is what we're going to talk about. Okay, but let's start with level curves. So for level curves, we restrict ourselves to functions of two variables. So we're going to have something like this, a function of x and y. In this case, my function is f. Now, the idea of a level curve is that I'm going to set the function equal to some constant value. And that is going to be an equation now in terms of x and y and some constant. And so it will be a curve in the xy coordinates. And so by graphing that curve, that is my level curve. So let's take a look at uh, an example function, one of the functions we had from last time. Okay, there it was. We looked at this function here, right? It was given by this expression. And we found in the last video its domain, right? And uh, by the way, let's just take a look at what the graph looked like. It was this uh, hemisphere, right? That was the graph of this function. Now, what we're going to talk about is the technique that we're using here is going to help us see what this graph would look like without having to use graphing software like this. So just using a little bit of algebra, we can get an idea of this. So um, there's our function. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to set our function equal to a constant. Now, what constant are we going to use? Well, that's something we're going to play around with a little bit. So let's start with... Uh, the constant equal to zero and see what happens. Okay, so if I take this thing and set it equal to zero, what do I get? Okay, let's use a little bit of algebra to write this in a, in a nicer form. If I do that, what I'll end up with is this equation. And that is, of course, the equation of a circle of radius 2. Let's go ahead and graph that right here. There we go. As accurate as I can be uh, drawing with a pen under a camera. Uh, so, okay, that's, that's the level curve corresponding to c equals 0. That's the c equals 0 level curve. All right. Uh, let's try the c equal 1 level curve. OK, well, this time I'm going to set this, my function, equal to 1. Using a little bit of algebra, you know, square both sides, solve for x squared plus y squared, I get this equation this time. All right, well, that's, the, that's a circle of radius square root of 3. So that's going to be something like this. All right, so that's the c equals 1 level curve over there. Okay, c equals 0 on the outside, c equals 1 over here. Okay, let's keep going with this. Let's take c equals 2. All right. Okay, let's use a little bit of algebra. Oh, okay, so circle of radius zero maybe? Or maybe you might just notice that the only solution to this equation is the point zero, zero. So there's the level curve. It's not actually a curve at all, it's just a point. Right, so that's c equals two right there. All right, and then let's just do one more for good measure. Let's take c equals 3. If 
I use a little bit, a little bit of algebra here, I get this. Okay, well, there are no real solutions to this. So there is no C equal 3 level curve. And I think you can kind of see what was happening. These, these circles are decreasing in radius till I get to a point, and beyond that, there aren't going to be any. Okay, let's see what's happening uh, in, on the graph to see what's going on here. So here's my graph. Now, what is a graph? Graph is the set of points x, y, z such that z is equal to f of x, y. But we were looking at the level curves, right? Those are obtained by setting the function equal to c, a constant. Well, that's the same thing as saying z is equal to c. Well, that's the same thing as saying we're intersecting the graph of z equals f of x, y with the graph z equals c. Let's, let's graph z equals c. This is when c is 0. So if I look at the intersection of these two graphs, you notice, that, by the way, z equals 0 is a plane horizontal plane. It, it is the xy plane, in fact. And you can see the intersection of that plane with our graph of our function is just a circle. That was the first circle that we drew, the one of radius 2. Now, if I set z equal to 1, that, was, that gives you this surface. And if you look at the intersection with our graph, we get the other circle. It's a little choppy here because the computer is not of perfect accuracy, but you can see that that is a circle where they are intersecting. Right? And that was the second circle that we drew. And if I let uh, uh, z equal 2, well, then I have this plane, and you can see it intersects the graph right at the tippy top there, right at that one single point. So that's what we were seeing. And when c equals 3, there is no intersection, and that's why we were getting those solutions. So we were seeing the intersection of our graph with different planes parallel to the xy plane of different altitudes. So the level curves are the curves of constant altitude on our graph. And by putting those together, we can get an idea of what this graph was supposed to look like. Let's go ahead and, and, and I'm going to sketch this out for you so you can see it kind of happen uh, live here without using computer graphing software. So by the way, this is what we drew before, right? These were our three level curves. Now I'm going to try to draw them in 3D to get an idea of what the 3D picture would look like. Here's the z-axis. Here's my x. And here's my y. Right? These things go in the other direction as well. So um, 1, 2, 1, 2, 1, 2, 1, 2. All right, so th that circle of radius 2, that first level curve uh, corresponding to c equals 0, that was at height z equals 0. Right? So that was a circle down here in the xy plane of radius 2. Now that's at height z equals 0. Now we're going to go up to height z equals 1, right? And that was a circle of radius root 3, so a cir circle of slightly smaller radius, right, at that altitude. And then at z equals 2, we just got a point. So you can kind of see what's happening. These circles are getting smaller as I go up here. And so you can kind of already get that picture of a hemisphere. And so that's a very useful way of getting at what the graph would look like by looking at these level curves. Now I want to show you one other thing. These level curves, you may have seen them before. These are used in what, what, what are called topographic maps. Let's take a look at these. So I, I, what I did is I looked just, I went onto Google Maps and I just uh, had it uh, find a, a region and now they're not showing right now. Let's see if I can get them to show up again. They were here last time out. There they are. Okay, I just had to zoom in. Okay, I guess if you zoom in too much, you don't see them anymore. Okay, so you see on this, on this map, <clears throat> it's very hard to read because the, the coloration is very faint. Um, but you can see these curves. See this curve right here? You can also see that this, this curve is labeled 1200. That is a level curve. 
corresponding to altitude 1200. So these are all the points on this mountain that are of altitude 1200 and they form a curve, the level curve. Uh, down here you can see another, you can see other curves that are very faint, but you can see this bolder one down here. This, is, this curve is labeled 1000 and you can see it goes around over here. This is the set of all points on the mountain of altitude 1000. And so by plotting these level curves, you can get an idea of the three-dimensional uh, aspect of the terrain. Now, Google Maps has done a little bit more for us. They put some shading in here, which helps even more. But you don't really need to see that shading. As long as you can see these level curves and you've got a few of them labeled, so you know if you're going uphill or downhill, you can get an idea of the terrain. Some notable, notable features that you should notice here is whenever you see closed loops like this, it means you're nearing a peak or perhaps a, a trough of a valley, a, a ditch, right? It's either coming up to a, a, a peak like this or coming into a bowl shape like this. So that's something to look for. These closed loops are telling us where we have something like that hemisphere that we were just looking at. It was, they, were, they were circles. It's telling us where we have mountains or ditches. Uh, of course, you can have a wider variety of curves, as you can see around over here, depending on the actual shape of the terrain. So these level curves are very useful in that regard, and they, they're they very useful for allowing us to graph, get an idea of what the graph of a, a function of two variables will look like. All right, I want to go back to our function, and I want to talk about something else. It's called vertical traces. Okay, Vertical traces are what happens when you just set one of these variables that the function is a function of uh, is equal to a constant. All right, so let's try that. Let's set x equal to zero. What happens if we set x equal to zero? Well, then what I'm looking at is I'm looking at the same function, but I'm replacing x with a constant, zero. So what do I have left? If I take out the x, I'm just left with a function of y. All right, so let's just call that g of y. That is f of 0 comma y. See, it doesn't depend on x anymore, so I can just call it g of y. And uh, what function would that be? Well, I'm just replacing x with 0, so I just have the square root of 4 minus y squared. Now what I can think about is, if it's just a function of y, I can plot that in the y z plane. And what is this? This is the graph of the upper half of a circle of radius 2. Okay. And that corresponds to x equal 0. Okay, now let's try x equals 1. Okay, now my function is obtained by setting x equal to 1 and letting y be a free variable. Now, if x is 1, then this becomes a 3 over here. All right, so just think about this. g of y equals root 3 minus y squared. Well, that's a upper half of a circle of radius root 3. So that's going to be something like this. That's when x is 1. OK, what about x equals 2? Well, now my function is f of 2 comma y. Uh, and if I replace x with 2, well, these cancel out. It's 4 minus 4, so I just get uh, negative y squared. Now, that should look concerning to you, right? Negative under a root, square root. But it's not always negative, is it? When y is 0, it's just 0, right? And you can take the square root of 0. So it has one value of y where it's defined, and it's when y is 0. And what's its what's square root of 0? It's 0. So it's just a point, right? So that's the x equals 2 trace. And we could go for x equals 3. Um, then our function would be, well, what would this become? Well, 4 minus 3 squared, that's negative uh, 5. Well, there is no value of y for which this will be defined, right? 
So this is not defined for any value of y, right? So nothing to graph here. So let's put these together uh, on that graph that we drew before for the level curves and see how these pan out. Well, when I had that first curve, that circle of radius 2 uh, in the y z plane when x was 0, I was getting, let me move my camera down just a little bit, I was getting this semicircle right here. That was x equals 0. And when x is 1, well, I'm going to move out 1 in the x direction, and I'm going to draw that circle over here. Well, that's the circle of radius root 3. That one right there. And then that little dot that I got for x equals 2 was that point right there. So again, it kind of is helping us get an idea of the three-dimensional shape, um, well, the, the shape of the graph in three dimensions. I shouldn't say the graph is three-dimensional. It's actually a two-dimensional surface, but it's in three dimensions. And if I look at what I'm doing um, on uh, calcplot 3D, we can do that. We can set x equal to various values of c. And what we're seeing is, excuse the pun, we are seeing the intersections of the graph of the function with different uh, planes corresponding to x equals c, right? So we're seeing these curves. And by looking at these curves, these slices, um, we, we can get an idea of the three-dimensional picture of what's going on. It reminds me of an MRI. You know, when they do an MRI of your brain, this is what they do. They scan it in slices. And then by looking at those individual slices, they can put it back together and get an idea of what's going on throughout your brain. So that's the idea of level curves and traces. Now, the third topic that I want to discuss here is the idea of level surfaces. And for this, I want us to revisit a function that we had before. Let's see if I can find it here in my notes. Here we go. It was a function of three variables. Okay, we want to look at the level surfaces of this. How do you get the level surface? Well, you do the same thing you do for a level curve. You just set the function equal to a constant. Okay, so let's start with um, a constant, uh, say, c equals zero. Okay, so um, set this equal to zero. So if I replace this with zero, what do I get? So c equals zero. So I get zero equals Okay, well I solve this, right? So to 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 solve to to well not solve it, simplify it so I can write this in terms of x squared plus y squared plus z squared. Uh, I would probably take e, the exponential function of both sides. Well e to the zero is one. And e to the log, it, well, those are inverse functions, so they cancel each other out. I get this. Well, what is this the equation of? Think about it. Pause the video. Think about this for a second. Okay, you got it? Yeah, this is a sphere of radius 1. So when c is 0, we have a surface, a sphere of radius 1. What about when c is 1? Let's try that one. Oh, well, we do this one the same way, right? Take, you know, raise each, apply the exponential function to each side. So the left-hand side becomes e, and the right-hand side becomes this. Well, here we have a sphere of radius uh, square root of e. Right? So a slightly bigger sphere. And as we increase the value C, we get bigger and bigger spheres. So we get spheres um, enveloped within each other. Let's try some other ones, like um, C equals negative 1. Well, now I would have negative 1 equals this guy. So now I have E to the negative 1 equals x squared plus y squared plus z squared. Well, this is 1 over e. It's still a positive number, so it makes sense to be the radius of a sphere. So we have another sphere of a smaller radius. Now, it, it, it's not too hard to see that the smaller I make c, the uh, smaller this radius is going to be. You know, the, 
make C negative 999. This is e to the negative 999. It's still a positive number, so it still makes sense to be the radius of a sphere. So we get this, just this infinite collection for different values of C, different, an infinite collection, a one parameter family, one, one for each value of C, a different sphere. And each sphere is enveloped within the last one as I increase the value of C. And so these are the level surfaces of our function. The surfaces where the function is constant. It's hard, I can't draw a picture for you because I would have to draw it in four dimensions and I can't really do that. But you have to really think abstractly here, try to increase everything a dimension, try to think about those level curves, but now imagine that they're representing the, the value at which a function of three variables is constant, and so that makes them a level surface that you draw in three dimensions. Kind of an interesting thing to think about. It doesn't help us draw the graph in four dimensions, but it helps us think about how the function behaves. So a good example of a function that would, uh, that would be useful to, to think about in this way uh, would be the gravitational field of the Earth. So uh, the, the, the force of gravity is dependent on how far we are from the center of the Earth. And so it's a function of three variables because we, you know, we live in three-dimensional space as we, I'm, I'm thinking about getting off the surface of the Earth, right? And so there are three dimensions in which we can move in outer space around the Earth. And so the gravitational field, the, the strength of gravity, uh, is, is a function of those three variables. So if I wanted to think about this function, I might think about it exactly this way. I might think about, okay, well, where is this function constant? Where is the gravity constant? Well, because it only depends on the distance we are from the center of the Earth, the gravity is constant on, um, on concentric spheres surrounding the Earth. So as long as I stay a constant radius away from the center of the Earth, I will have a constant uh, tug of the Earth's gravitational field. And as I move further away from the Earth, the value of that gravitational field gets less. If I move closer to the Earth, the value gets greater. Or if I look at the larger uh, level curves, the larger level surfaces, rather, of larger value, I'm going to get smaller concentric spheres. And if I look at um, uh, level surfaces with a constant of a larger value, a smaller value, I'm going to have the larger uh, encompassing uh, concentric spheres. So the gravitational field would be an example of a function that you would think about in precisely this way.